Hello, all you brothers and Prager sisters. Welcome to the NBS show. I am the man, the myth, the hippogriff, the silver quill. Joining me today on this voyage to camp review, we have planeswalker extraordinaire and podcaster Norman Sanzo. Hey, hey. No, we're not doing that song anymore. Okay, what about, uh, welcome to the, no, not that one. Um, what are we going to sing now? Because I got no idea. I'm so confused. Uh, can you play solo? As in solo, we can't hear. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing the world's smallest violin right about now. Uh, the world's smallest violin is played by Joey Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> speak, All the work on the rage. Speaking of rage, we have our our local Pokemon mascot, but also rageaholic, Sapphire Heartsong. I will bleed the blood of my enemies. She's so adorable when she says that. Yay! And joining us as a special co-reviewer and guest, the Brony fandom's top scorer on gaming, Finn Zipponi. Welcome, everybody. We are just going to have so much fun at camp today. You're all going to become part of the Legends of Everfree. Yay! Die! And usually that's where I start to think we're in a horror movie, that, you know, anyone who t- who gets that excited about camp He's probably got an axe out back with, you know, some dried blood on it. Silver, <laughs> save me. He scares me. Somebody save me from these crazy people. Oh, wait, I can save myself. Knife. Or if you're at Camp Everfree, you might just get superpowers. <laughs> Yay! My superpower is I get to summon demons. Also, my headcanon on crystals being magic is true. Ah, but that's getting neck deep into spoiler territory. So first, let's give just an overview of this here movie move. And basically, the Equestria girls go to camp. Okay, there we go. Yay! And whatever happens in camp stays in camp. And this one time at Everfree Camp, I I stuck an element of harmony. We won't continue from there. (laughs) But anyway, they're off and away to camp, but there's there's some things going on behind the scenes. Some of them magical, some of them financial. You're not quite sure who you can trust. You're not quite sure what's going on. You don't know what's what. And it's hard to see some of this unfolding past all the Portuguese advertisements. Whoops, that's the early release. (laughs) uh, Officially, it's released on October 1st on Netflix. So it's out. But if you're the kind of person who wants to get the DVD slash Blu-ray, it's November 1st. So you have to wait a month for it. Ah. So we've had a release at least a week in advance in Brazil. Which, this is the age of the internet. Whatever happens in one country is viewed worldwide now. True. I think you have to be hard-pressed to actually keep a show contained to just within your borders. Yep. What about that UK, then, yay? <laughs> oh, we'll get to that pitfall shortly. Screw you, UK. You spoiled the season. No, no, no. no, no. Seppi, 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 take that back, because when this review comes out, all the seasons have been already out, officially. Yeah, we'll have already had I our... I pre- take it back because I actually like some people in the UK, especially the guy that bought me a new pen for my tablet and then sent it to me because it was only available in the UK. Oh, that's nice of him. E. But yes, we'll talk... Birch. But we'll talk about the, the Pony episodes exiting early, a.k.a. the Prexit, <laughs> another time. Right now, we need to talk about Everfree. So, initial thoughts. Sapphire. You. Uh, I don't know if it's a downgrade or an upgrade from the uh, last movie that we saw. I say it's about in the same category and same place as that movie and from that enjoyment. I did like the movie. I'm not as amazed as I was during the last movie, especially with the ending. But I still enjoyed it. There's not really much to go on. Very, very good, very good. Also, also, before I head out, my head cannon was right. Okay, I'm good. Good on ya. Everyone loves it when they can say my head cannon was right. I am one of the monkeys at typewriters, <laughs> just hammering away at the works of Shakespeare. <laughs> Yee. Uh, now, Norman, what did you think of this here movie? I find this movie rather interesting. I like the setup. I like how they kind of. Well, went for the whole, hey, instead of this being our final year, let's just insert this after the friendship games and put us in a camp setting. Yay, everybody goes to camp, right? Do they have the money to go to camp? 
Yay! Camp! But other than that, I do like how this movie was rather ambitious from the previous one. It kind of raises its stakes a bit more in terms of its storytelling and elements. And what we got here was an interesting tale. And with how Twilight had to deal with her own fears of magic. If you guys really think about it, she's the only one out of the main six who have not dealt with magic before. And her first experience with it was rather scary. Yes, indeedy. And our guest Finn Zipponi, what did you think of Equestria's The Humans? I think you're my good friend. Well, I am, I might be a little biased because I absolutely, I've always loved the camp setting. I love, I love places that are set in a camp because it just has such an interesting atmosphere to the whole thing. It's very relaxing, very peaceful. And I've gone to camp a few times and I know what it's like. So right off the bat, it gains points with me because I love the camp setting. And the story itself was actually really good. I loved a lot of the characterization in this. First of all, I loved how, um, Twilight is sort of having an internal conflict with herself. Like this, first of all, she's never experienced magic before. And the first time she's had experience with magic, it's been pretty, well, really, really bad. So seeing her have to deal with that kind of conflict was really interesting to see. And uh, of course, I'm just going to say right now, this is probably some of Sunset Shimmer's best uh, appearances to date. I mean, she was pr- probably one of the biggest highlights of the entire movie. I loved her every second she was on screen. Don't you mean that for every appearance she made, except for the first one? Yeah, even the much. even the first one is argu- was, was arguably all right. Nutshell. Yeah, Sunset. She for she life. she makes she makes these movies, basically. Yes, Sunset for Life, best waifu. Until Flash steals her away. <laughs> we'll talk that about that one later. <laughs> later, yeah. later. And as for myself, I enjoyed this movie. I will say, much like the friendship games, this feels like a comedy of errors. There's no clear set bad guy. At the outset, uh, we haven't really had that since Rainbow Rocks. The first two movies featured a clear cut villain working on a sinister plan. Sunset, who was not that great a villain, and the Sirens, who were, to my eyes, are still the strongest villains in this, uh, series. Yes. But then, then when you get into friendship games and now Camp Everfree, it's everyone just trying to do, live their lives, and they trip over one another. And sometimes into bigger events, which is honestly probably more true to real life. You know, people don't just run around cackling and saying, I will defeat you. No, they're just saying, I'm going for what I want. There is a lot of conflict because each character has a goal. Twilight wants to overcome her, her past or is afraid of who she is now. Sunset is looking to push everyone to be more, but the rest of the group, I kind of lump the human five into one group. They have never really been as individual. They behave as individuals, but their, their experience is always as a collective. So I love them as they want, they all want to get away and relax and leave behind this magical parade. Also, I found it hilarious that they're saying the past year. So all this has been happening over the course of just one year. <laughs> oh my God. Even in yeah. Equestria Girls, the pony timing still, oh God. I do have this theory that time flows differently on a, on opposite sides of Yon Mirror portal. It's not even that <laughs> silver because when you think about it, this is what 2016. The first movie came out what uh, three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. So it's like what? <laughs> no, they can't. Uh, they wouldn't want to actually date this specifically. They want kids to watch it down the road. True, but I just want them to be seniors in high school, and after this fourth movie's done, they kind of go off to college and have college funds. Why, why, why? So you can, um, live your fantasies, Norman? Is that why you want them to be in college and be adults? Because it's creepy if they're teenagers, right? Where are you even going with this? <laughs> she wants to transition to talking about Timber. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Timber Spruce, who uh, likes to hit on uh, camp attendees, which is actually kind of illegal. But we'll get to that shortly. So basically, I get the sense that we all enjoyed it. We all have different views on what's the strength of Equestria Girls. So guys, we are going to go knee-deep into spoilers, but this is a lengthy movie. And to be honest, some scenes are really high impact. Some scenes are just sort of there. 
So rather than try and pick this apart scene by scene, let's... I will be your host on this guide of themes or characters or topics. Whatever enters my plebeian mind. Yes, and we'll just insert our thoughts in between. Yes. Like a thought sandwich. Yum. Here comes a thought. Sandwich. Mm. With lots of... Here comes a thought. With lots of mayonnaise. Oh, yeah. Oh, could we have the Japanese mayonnaise? That's good. I have never... save me. You're somewhat of a cinnamon roll. Hey, Will. Okay. I don't... I don't even know what Japanese mayonnaise, but if it's anything like Common Rider Wizard, it's got to be pretty good. <laughs> oh, you watch Wizard, really? Magic, it's magic, it's magic, oh, it's no. showtime. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're going to enjoy the fruit ones. Oh, oh, I love Gaim. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Before we officially start, have you seen Common Rider Black? Oh, I see. You want me to talk about the black common rider? I've only seen little bits and pieces. Oh, uh, that's retro, but it's good. Go, right. go to Manga Common. I'm sure he could tell you all about it. We'll probably oh, do a that. show about that one sooner or later. <laughs> there you Someday, go. Someday, maybe. Hmm. So before we go to the actual camp, I think we should talk about the opening scene and the big fear. Twilight is having nightmares about Midnight Sparkle still being somewhere in the recesses of her mind. Does this remind you of the whole Luna in Nightmare Moon thing? Because it feels like it. This is actually also similar to Sunset Shimmer, who she went through her own demonic experience. But she never feared that Demon Shimmer was in the back of her mind. And Luna, I don't think, ever feared that Nightmare Moon was was knocking around in her basement. In a way, I I remember seeing the uh, Sunset Shimmer... um like retrospective that uh silver made and maybe this is due to the fact that twilight isn't mature enough like in this universe to uh handle such a you know big thing like lingering in her mind she almost took over the world of course uh, in this situation here twilight here does not know a uh, thing about magic and suddenly being exposed to that much magical power and being evil and, yeah, that, that's her first experience. It's like eating a really bad chili dog for your first time. And someone saying, hey, eat more chili dogs. It's really good. Sonic the Hedgehog says so. I love how you compared chili dogs to a demon magical being, Norman. I. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've had some chili dogs result in hellfire, if you know what I mean. Yep. Oh, my. Oh, God. Is it going to be like the end of your Rarity Investigates review again? Oh, a little wetter, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's the analogy there. What A first bad experience is going to set you for life. Biddy Finn, what do you think of uh, Twilight's sort of PTSD with Midnight Sparkle? I honestly found it pretty interesting. I mean, I'm always down for dreamlike imagery. And considering, like he said before, that this is her first, um, this is kind of her first experience with any kind of magic at all, really, minus you know, what happened in the friendship games, it's really interesting to see exactly what's happening with her. I mean, this is an internal battle that's happening within herself. I'll admit that by the time that, I'm not going to say exactly how, but uh, by the time that she does overcome this fear, it's a little, I kind of want to say rushed, but the way it builds up and constantly shows how exactly how fearful this is and how it's eating up inside her, it's really well done. Also, the way that all of her friends in the opening scene like disappear almost into the Matrix, that's freaking creepy. Yep. Yeah, I, I get a Tron de kind of feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Users de <laughs> But the appearance of uh, Midnight here is just too cool. She appears behind Twilight and poop, your friends are gone. Now you're all mine. <laughs> and I do really enjoy how they, Twilight has still kept her thick glasses, but that just enhances it when, when uh, Midnight Sparkle's aura glasses uh, clamp around her. Mm -hmm. And you start to see that in integration taking place. That's, that's a great image as well. What I also find funny is that they have a specific name, Midnight Sparkle, Whereas Sunset never had a name for her demon form. We, as fans, just sort of conjured one up. Demon Sparkle, right? No, uh, Demon... Whatever was the current name. I don't remember. Did demon demon Shimmer. Shimmer. Demon Shimmer. Yeah. We really... 
we really need to work on our namings. We're not being terribly original. I'm going to call her Gary. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You want to know she would be Akuma Shimmer. Ooh, there you go. Now we're talking. In translation, How that do you means... that? <laughs> in translation, that would just mean Demon Shimmer. <laughs> You've disappointed me yet again, Norman. Hey, and this is you sounded cool. You just took cool. the name and made it foreign. <laughs> Ain't that all words? No. Now, of course, this all turns out to be a dream. Oh. So Twilight is is asleep on the bus, going to Camp Everfree. And once again, I have to raise an important question. Yep. Where the heck is Cancelot High's budget? <laughs> because after the huge, huge money pit... That was uh, the Friendship Gate. Seriously, building a motorcycle track and mobile archery uh, course. Yeah, your guys are a public school, right? <laughs> uh, now Luna and Celestia are saying, we're so proud of you all for raising the money so that we can do this. Do you ever save <laughs> the monies? Do you have a school savings account for this kind of thing? Exactly. Because, uh, because where does the money the, go? They make the students create the banners. They have the students do fundraiser music music performances. Do you ladies ever budget for the future? Apparently not. You wanted to know my hit canon for this situation here? The previous principal for Cantola High or the founder of the school is some guy named Bearded Something. You star- some guy named... Discord. Uh, star of something bearded. Like, I think he was the founder. Come from a foreign land, very rich. Hmm. Uh, Principal Star Swill Beard, eh? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> He's very French. That sounds yeah. about right. <laughs> That's my hit, Kernan. <laughs> there you go. And so we arrive at Camp Everfree. Now let's talk camp for a minute because I, I hear, Finn, I hear you that you enjoy it. It's a passionate time. I'm, I'm not the outdoorsy type, and I, I only went to camp once, unless you count my middle school, which always went on these team-building camp exercises, but I hated my middle school class. I've been to camp. It was terrible. Yeah. So yeah. I think a lot of this depends on what kind of experience you've had in camp. So, And I've never been to band camp. I'm just saying. <laughs> I've just been saying. to Boy Scout camp, but it was freaking camp. amazing. Awesome. Norman, have you ever been to camp? No, honestly, I'm your typical nerd that likes to stay indoors, play video games and whatnot. It's only recently that I like to go outside and play card games. <laughs> That's not a bad Would thing at all. Would that be a result of Pokemon Go, no? Nor- nah, Norman. not even Pokemon Go. My addiction to card games started out way back when, when I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Trust me. Are, are, are your card games on motorcycles by any chance? No, nah, start, it started out with this strange box with puzzles that you need to assemble to call out a pharaoh that lives inside of me somehow and it started off me by me going to some strange school where you have three colors that shows how smart you are i don't know it's strange and then you went to motorcycles silver shun him for not getting the Yu-Gi-Oh bridge reference He's got, he has done like five different Yu-Gi-Oh series in one sentence. I know, but he still didn't get the Yu-Gi-Oh bridge reference. No! I, no, I'm sorry, Safi. I've got to duck you points for not being as innovative. <laughs> oh, I know this. I know yeah. that the, uh, three different, uh, school came from the second generation with GX. I know that the first part that he mentioned was based on, uh, the original series with the Pharaoh. I know a bit. Hey, hey Sappy? Yeah. Sappy? Yes. Nerd! <laughs> Nerd! deducted points. 50 points from Gryffindor. <laughs> 50 points from Gryffindor. I'm a Slytherin, thank you very little. Oh, well, then you tried to kill the world. Minus 60 points. Minus <laughs> <laughs> uh, 100 points for world domination. Actually, no, I believe I'm a Hufflepuff. I'm an, in- I'm an innocent cinnamon roll. Me too! <laughs> but anyway... But give the, me my butter beer now. At the camp. <laughs> we The camp setting has does offer one unique thing. Something never before seen in the world of Equestrian Girls. They're wearing pants. Oh, God. Pants. We're wearing pants. <laughs> Yay. Uh, short, short pants. <laughs> well, 
more is the sense that up until now, all the girls, regardless of their personality, have all been wearing skirts. And as I understand it, that's easier to animate in Flash. Mm. Uh, because you don't have to have the pant legs move. You just kind of have the skirt just there. Exactly. And uh, even though I've always felt that Rainbow and Applejack would want to be wearing, I don't know, jeans or, you know, pants, not skirts. And so the animation in here is, is quite exceptional that they've changed the wardrobes for the entire cast. And now they're, now they're actually a, not relying on skirts to cover movement. So I need to correct you on something because from what I noticed on the poster, Applejack and Fluttershy still wear skirts. That is kind of the, that is the bizarre thing. There's, they, Fluttershy I understand. Applejack is still wearing the denim skirt. I don't know why. But you still got Rarity, Pinky, Sunset, Twilight, and Rainbow Dash. And with Rarity, are you sure you're not the element of honesty? Because those hips don't lie. <laughs> oh. oh, my. Yeah, try that for a pickup line. I guarantee you'll get like five slaps hey, hey. from one person. But it, it has is, to be me. The, the animation is quite exceptional. Oh, yeah. So And that is enjoyable. But overall, visually, what do you guys think of Camp Everfree? I like it. I, I like how they set up everything by explaining the strange, strange objects like the gazebo or the sundial or even the totem. Those things seems out of place, especially the totem where you're not. Have you ever like, been to Camp Laszlo? That's a different. Camp. I love Camp Laszlo. <laughs> Same here, but well, that's, that's not the name of the camp. It's uh, you get the point. Yeah, but they had a totem pole. Yeah, but it's I, a cartoon. It, yeah. But it was the Joey Cabin exclusive totem pole. It wasn't part of the whole camp. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. <laughs> but I don't think... They also had a Cabin flag, which was awesome. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think that a totem pole fits with the camp thing. But they do explain it away by saying that, hey, uh, each year, uh, campers uh, make a gift for the camp as a token of appreciation and whatnot. Especially the whatnot. Mm-hmm. I read the novelization of this mm-hmm. uh, of this movie, and there's one scene that I was kind of sorry didn't get translated into text. When Luna points out the absurdity of a sundial that can't work at night, <laughs> yeah. Celestia remarks, "Well, that was why you were banished from our from our uh, cabin." <laughs> <laughs> why did they not include that? Okay, now that's funny. I know, right? <laughs> Right? <laughs> maybe, That's maybe, great. maybe we'll get it in the full DVD version coming out on November 1st. Yes, yeah, so a slight disclaimer here. I've only, I've read a novelization and watched the, the early release Brazilian. <gasps> there, at the time of this recording, there's not been enough time to sit down and watch the Netflix. Oh, true that. So there may be some scenes that you all have seen that we have not. Yep. True Actually, that also. Who, uh, has anyone in this podcast seen the Netflix version just yet? No, nope. not yet. I didn't right. have. I don't time. own Netflix. Mm. All right. Well, that we, we there are surprises yet to be had. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. But but that was just that was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we're introduced to some new dynamics. Flash tries <laughs> yes. to, to to cozy up to new Twilight. He tries. Bless his little heart. Uh, bless his. Uh, well, I I don't know about bless, but. I, I've made my enjoyment of Flash's torment quite, quite, uh, well known. <laughs> yeah. Considering you nearly decapitated the poor guy. Oh. Uh, I didn't follow through though. Somebody else did. You have, you have your limit. Oh yeah. Corpulent Brony. He, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he finished the job, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. He fin- he went full, full no, on dark. It was morbid. Yeah. But honestly, well. the poor jobber here, he's trying really hard and uh, the poor guy, I like, I feel sorry for Splash. Like, he's a nice guy, but. No, he yeah. isn't. Well, he's generically nice. That's the problem. The poor guy is not given screen time to be a full character with which people can empathize. Yeah, but I know. Unless the dazzlings hypnotize him, then he turns into a jerk. Well. He also apparently really likes to shout out from the audience and just sort of interrupt things like last, <laughs> like last movie. But here's the thing. This movie actually does take his character in a different direction. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. let's talk, since Flash is kind of incidental, let's just talk about this off, off bat. Yeah. Sunset, Sunset, and boy, has she, does she get to show her best? She gives yeah. him, 
tough honesty. <laughs> it, it, not cruel, not uncaring, but she makes it clear, dude, you like a different Twilight, and that Twilight is not going to get to be in our world, probably in any other movies, because now we have her human world replacement. <laughs> yeah. So, so this particular ship is sunk. <laughs> yep. And it's, it's, I liked Flash that he had the, he was able to admit it, that he was able to say, you're right, I needed to hear that. What I don't like is that he immediately starts trying to pick things up with Sunset Shimmer again. <laughs> because I'm like, dude, this is not healthy. You just went through a quasi breakup and your first reaction is to go try to get a new girlfriend. Uh, you need to take some time for yourself. I don't know about that. I mean, in terms of fictional character world person, I think it's the right move for him. It's really cute for Flash to try and get back with Sunset, but I, I want to know the real terms of. No, nah, it's more of a rebound. <laughs> uh, well, also, it's it's recognizing that Sunset has changed, yeah. and so in many ways, he's speaking for the audience. Like, yeah. you've changed a lot from when I first knew you. Yeah, and I also I want to know the terms of the breakup in the first place. Like, what really happened? Who broke it off? And what else? Like, I want to know all about that. Well, I think, I think they said in the first they movie. They said that, uh, Flash broke up with her. Yeah. So, I'm assuming Flash broke up on terms, but now he feels like he can rekindle. And I would be lying if I said Sunset wasn't a little complimented by his attention. Yeah, true, but, it, uh, when this happens. I'd happened, say Sunset's out of this league at this point. Oh. Nah. There's always the muffin. No, she's not a muffin mare, is she? Yeah, muffin nope. pone. Like, um, they didn't really say her name. It'll just call nope. her muffin pone. But they did give her a speaking line. But that's about it for Flash. He, he, are we gonna get a uh, sigh, pat on the shoulder every episode, every movie now? That would be really, really poor on him. Like he's the jobber. He's there to make others look good. But I would really like to see him shine. <laughs> Finn, what do you think of all Flashy Poo? I think Flashy Poo is actually pretty good. I mean, I've always kind of had a soft side for Flash, even during the first two movies. But in this one, he's he's kind of hit and miss. I mean, the first thing, the one thing I do have to give him a lot of credit for, I mean, when Sun when Sunset just gives him the blanket honest truth, he doesn't, like, you know, get upset. He doesn't grieve. He doesn't go into, like, a you know, a, a super sad song moment. He just accepts it and he moves on. So major props for that already. But like I said, I guess... When when you're saying he's trying to pick it up with Sunset Shimmer, um, I don't really think he's trying to like rekindle a romantic relationship. I think it's more just he just wants to be friends again. You know, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking is going on. So yeah. I, I did really enjoy his appearance, and yeah, I wish. I don't know. Were. I don't know if uh, I don't know if a quest. I don't know if um the actual Pony Twilight is ever going to come back into the movie series, but <laughs> it'd be interesting to see them. You know, hit things off again. Yeah, I honestly want to see Flash and Sunset because why not? Right. Why not? Like, if because, they are happy because together. people will will defend Sunset as their waifu. <laughs> it's just Twilight all over again. <laughs> I, in all honesty, I don't even mind it or care because if the if they know what they are doing, if they know how to write a good story, good on them. If you can excel the character, do it. I did get the sense that Flash was trying to rekindle a romantic relationship, boyfriend girlfriend, but that may be. Another movie, and I think we can say with with confidence there will be a fifth one. Uh, yes. Oh, absolutely. I'm still waiting for Discord. <laughs> I I still love the idea of President Discord. Yes. Honestly, I would just love to have Discord from the Pony Universe come here and just messing around with stuff because hey, I'm I have an off day. Why not, right? <laughs> you're also weird looking. Why are you on two legs? <laughs> That's my shtick. Uh. But anyway, we I think we've we've devoted a great deal of energy to Flash. Now it's time for our two new characters. Because at the orientation we meet Gloriosa Daisy and Timber Spruce. Spruce. Uh, so spruce up your life. And let's start with Gloriosa. Let's break this down. Finn, Gloriosa, what do you think? Huh, uh this is one of those characters where I kinda knew something was up with her from the very beginning. I mean 
you can kind of tell when someone is being like super duper nice in this kind of thing. You kind of know so maybe something's up with them. I mean, for what she was, she was a pretty enjoyable character. And I really did like when she went full on villain with all of the vine type root type, you know, weapons and all that stuff. And I'll be honest, I never thought Filthy Rich would be any kind of antagonist that she would be facing. I mean, in the show, you know, he was like... You know, he, he wasn't really a villain. He was just kind of trying to keep his daughter in line and all that stuff. But it turns out he's he the reason there. that she's the one going crazy. So I, I did like, I did enjoy her character for what it was, but I could totally see that she was a villain from a mile away. Yeah, and, more or less a villain. One mm-hmm. of those villains that everybody forgives her for, or something. Just like Sunset. I don't know. <laughs> just like Sunset. It's just like 90% of Equestria's characters. Uh, yeah. Sefi, what, what, what do you think of, uh, our daisy haired? Uh, delinquent. She's kind of there. She kind of acts like me. I got this, but I really don't help me. Oh God. That's basically my reaction. She's there. I'm not really a fan of her. If that makes any sense, I could care less. Norman, what do you think of Gloriosa? Hmm, Gloriosa, Gloriosa. It rhymes with Furiosa. Yeah, but she ain't driving a truck. True that. Uh, but honestly, Gloriosa here is one of those characters where, like Finn said, you can tell that something's up. She's too cheery. She's too... Something's wrong with her. But in all honesty, I do understand how this character feels. Like, she's just trying to make everyone happy, have a really good time at camp, and just have the best experience. If we do not know the backstory of her, we won't know that she has an issue. All we know is that she's really, really cheerful. The scary kind of cheerful. You know, like how Pinky says, um, I know smiles, but that's really a creepy smile. Actually, I can see why. It's funny you mentioned Pinky, because Gloria got me thinking about Pinky. And when when the show first started, I wasn't sure I'd like Pinky, because I don't trust 100% cheerful people. I feel like you're putting on an act for me. And so when Gloriosa was just going around saying, I did the best, it's like, you are so insincere. Unfortunately, because that is her character for 90% of the film, uh, we don't really get to see, we get to see the frustration underneath. It's like, see, that now I know you're being insincere. That makes me actually kind of dislike you more. With Pinky, it, she was open with her feelings, and you could see her having a bad day. So Very I was true. like, so that's why I, I started to like her, because she chooses to be good and kind, despite those feelings, while Gloriosa is doing it sort of out of obligation. It's for her, she's being nice for her own end. And there's an inherent dishonesty to that. So, for a good majority of the movie, I really just couldn't stand this character. (laughs) I understand what she's facing, but since we don't get to see her vulnerable side until the sunset's uh, mind dive, it doesn't really impress me. And so, I'm like, ah, can we, can we Move on to the magic stuff, please. Uh, all right. <laughs> we'll move on to the epic climax. Yeah. Ah, not yet. Before that, we got the brother. The brother name. We got the Timber Spruce. And, oh, Timber. What, yeah. what, to say. <laughs> what to say about the new ship bait. Oh, and Norman, your, gig- your giggling invites you. Go first. <laughs> oh, all I can say is, it's going down. I'm yelling Timber. <laughs> No, why? They better date. You better ship. No, Finn, why? (laughs) You disrespect your classic rock origins. No. Uh, I want to salute you both, but at the same time, you're both dead to me, so, you know. (laughs) Oh, okay. How how do I want to approach this? Do I want to approach this from a sensible point of view, or do I just want to go... Well, do I just want to just go out there? You know, I'm just going to go out there. Go out there, man. Go. <laughs> when I first saw this guy hitting on Saitwai, I was just giggling with joy and glee. <laughs> uh, in my mind, like, oh, the people on the internet are just going to rage as this. <laughs> so much fun to be had. <laughs> Uh, Safi, would you like to bring some, some sanity and say what you'd like about Timber? Kill it with fire. Oh, I'm supposed <laughs> to say something I like about Timber. Well, he's certainly more interesting than, uh, Flash ever was, that's for sure. I have to say that's not fair. 
I think it's very fair. See, Flash was always a looks. But he basically he, was a wannabe Fonzie with a cinnamon roll attitude. But at the same time, too, the reason why we like Timber here is because, well, he's given more screen time. He's given more personality. He's... He, no, it's because he actually has a personality and it's actually slightly more interesting. Yeah, that's, that's why I like him anyway. Th- that's the thing, too, because with Flash, we didn't really get more out of him. With Timber here, well, this the, this movie is kind of dedicated towards the camp and he's one of the caretakers of the camp so we get more from him so we get to see him interact more with the main characters we get to see him have more lines than what he does and we get to see him hit on Saitoi which is a blast (laughs) yes yes well he certainly captured my heart considering he has seduced me with the fact that he knows a lot about gems. <laughs> oh yes, uh, Sapphire Heart Song would definitely want to appreciate a guy who knows his gems. He, he... Yes. And Finny Finn, what do you think of old Timber? I really enjoy Timber. I agree with you guys, I do think he has a lot more personality than Flash. And to be honest, I'm glad that instead of just being the simple love interest, kind of like Flash was in the first few movies, he's actually part of the story. You know, he like he's kind of got this whole thing going on with his sister where it's like she's the one who's kind of antagonizing everything while he's the one who's kind of trying to keep things at bay. So I I did. I liked his personality. I liked his whole, you know, thing about how he's kind of intelligent, kind of awkward, but also kind of smooth, kind of like he's actually got a personality. And I did, I also kind of liked his whole thing with his sister. You know, it was a very sweet thing to see. So I did really enjoy Timber. I don't mm-hmm. know if we'll see him in any more movies, but he was a lot, he was a definitely a lot more fun than Flash was. I hope he appears in more so the fans can rage at him for stealing sight. Why? <laughs> nah, I don't think they'll be that, uh, you know, vicious <laughs> this time. Then again, you never know with this fandom. <laughs> I do know you could land helicopters on that chin. I mean, not 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 since Shining Armor have we had such a chin. <laughs> and Shining was just like was like sand polished. Timber's got, I've got that just more a, chins than Chinatown. <laughs> he's got he's like the Jay Leno of of uh Equest, of Equestria <laughs> Girls. But but here's the thing. I agree with everyone that he has enjoyed greater screen time. He's more charming in that he demonstrates actual knowledge, which a geeky or, you know, a very knowledgeable Twilight would, would be attracted to that knowledge. So it's not just looks. And he he is friendly and outgoing and seems more sincere than his sister. But there is there are two uncomfortable facts to him. One is, as I said, he's hitting on a, a camp attendee, which is not smart at all. In fact, I believe, I don't know if it's forbidden by law, but most most camps set very clear rules you cannot interact with the camp visitors. Usually there's a much more significant age difference. I think but you th- can interact with the camp visitors, but I don't think you can have a romantic involvement with the camp visitors. Yeah, that, that's, you can't hit on them. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean by interact. <laughs> interact. But also, here he is. His sister is going through this emotional turmoil. She's dabbling in magic and losing it. He's trying to help her, but then suddenly, oh, hey, pretty girl. It's like, dude, check your hormones. <laughs> you got to yeah. prioritize here, amigo. And he's doing the right thing. That's why I like him. <laughs> really, don't. There's a fire. People, are, people are in danger, and you're like, hey, baby, you're cute. <laughs> hey, baby, want to take a trip to my cabin? In the woods. In the woods. Yeah. Uh, I could go for. Hey, babe, it's hot here. Is it me or is it you? Or is it the fire behind us? You people scare me. <laughs> Very much. All right. So we, we, we've we dilly-dallied for quite a bit. So a lot of things happen that fall within the themes we've talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, Twilight is so attracted to Timber. Glorious is trying to hold things together. Filthy Rich shows up. And what is it with Equestria Girls and taking characters from the show and making them worse? Snips yeah. and Snails were worse. I love Snips and Snails. They turned them into antagonists. I'm still so mad about that. <laughs> Yeah, that the, the, they made them bullies when they're not. Well, they're not. you have to remember that this is an alternate universe. You even mentioned in your retrospect of the main five, where 
their different personalities because of their upbringing and their age and their uh, what you call this maturity levels and whatnot. And I would say that for snips and snails, if they're guided the wrong way, they can be bullies, like Pokemon Skull. Okay, but Filthy Rich is now uh, greedy... Corporate businessmen. Har- harumph- greedy businessman stereotype. Mm-hmm. And I'll add to that, Shining Armor is an awful brother. Awful. Well, we don't really know much about Oh, Shining. I know all I need to know about that guy. Yeah, but with Filthy Rich here, with Filthy Rich here, we do know that he is a jerk. He wants money. And with this camp here, there's potential to get more money. And with the recent comics, uh, issue 46, was it? Uh, the election. Again, Filthy Rich, everyone's having had him be so nice or, well, respectful in his introduction. Now the show keeps, and comics keep trying to say, oh no, he's, he's, he's business, therefore he's bad. Well, I don't really agree with that. I do agree with you on that one. But the way they portrayed him in first, in his first appearance is a businessman like kind of thing where, yes, we must respect the elders because without these people, they won't give us the apples to make more money. So it's kind of a thing where he's just respecting out of obligation to get more money. That's about it. Either way, Filthy's there. He's causing some trouble. Mm -hmm. The girls go off and they try to do campy things while Twilight fears the magic within her. Now, Sunset. Sunset, once she's adorable with that flashlight. (laughs) And later, when awoken from sleep and awakens in karate stance. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's going on? (laughs) Oh, yeah. So, but let's, well, let's hold off on Sunset just yet because uh, basically, we hit we hit the part of the movie after some camp frolic. Our our heroines start to develop superpowers. Oh no! Now, what do you guys think of this? My head cannon is correct. I am the true gem pony. How? The fact that crystals are magic. <laughs> you can make crystals into magic, man. That's <laughs> right. my All that's right. my shtick on my channel. I am obsessed with crystals and trying to enhance their potential magic. <laughs> All right. For the convenience of Earth and Pegasi. You can do magic, da da. You can I'm have working anything on it. that you, you can desire. Do magic in a young girl's heart. What the there. hell are you going on about? Oh, no, you are too young. Uh, yeah. so go stand in the corner, youngin. <laughs> go listen to all your new age pop songs. With Ew, your... pop, gross. <laughs> With your Justin Beaver and your Justin Giraffe. <laughs> okay, don't even, <laughs> don't even go there. I... <laughs> and your Justin Wildebeest. <laughs> I refuse to acknowledge the fact that you would compare the fact that no, just no. I'm so offended. <laughs> just no. No, no. You don't do that. No. We need more lemon peach. I'm offended. I'm so triggered. <laughs> Trigger warning. Okay. Oh, speaking of triggers, favorite favorite magical power. Uh, Finn, go. <laughs> Hmm, uh, let's see, let's see. You got, uh, okay, we got Applejack, Super Strength, we got Rainbow, Super Speed, we got Pinkie Pie, Spontaneous Combusting Things. I don't know, I kinda wanna go with, I kinda, I kinda like Sunset's mind reading ability, because that's something that I really haven't seen before. I mean, we've seen Rainbow go fast, we've seen Applejack be strong, we've seen Twilight, you know, float things around, but I don't really think I've seen anybody with the power to read minds before, and that, it's kind of not only a crucial part to the story, but it would also be really be interesting to have. Plus, her reaction upon realizing that she has this new magical power is just adorable. <laughs> so true. I like Rarity Shield. You like the gem shield. Hmm, I wonder why. I wonder why. Yeah. Because I am the ultimate Pegasus Sapphire thing. Oh, they even made a Yu-Gi-Oh card after me. I remember something. Her name is Roger, so of course she's going for the shield. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make oh, the Captain God. American references <laughs> all you want. I'm already getting Ember into her nerddom for that dog now has a Captain American shield plush squeaky toy. <laughs> uh, see? It works. <laughs> so unless you're a tank or a, or a hippogriff, you must yield to her mighty shield. <laughs> yield? Hashtag yield to the shield. <laughs> 
Well, anyway, Norman, what's your favorite superpower? Honestly, I don't know. With this here, (laughs) with the seven of them, you got levitation, you got shield, you got strength, you got speed, you can talk to animals, you got... You you also have combusting sprinkles. Yeah, and also you got my. I think reading. that's one of the. That's my yeah. second favorite power. I, I to be honest, sprinkles. The, the minute you find out that Pinkie Pie has access to explosives willy nilly, that is a cue to run. <laughs> and the fact that she's so nonchalant about it, she's like, "I just toss the sprinkles and they explode." It's like, yep. oh god! It's like Pinkie be chalant, <laughs> be chalant. Uh, oh. Admit though, that's awesome. Um, but it's very honestly, awesome. I I would say that if I would have the skill I would like or the power I would like to have is talking to animals. Why not? Right? It's viable in real life. Yay! Well, and truthfully, Fluttershy is the most powerful pony when you think about it. She has domain over every animal in Equestria. Ah, yeah. Although it's funny. These superpowers are such a big deal in this world. In Equestria, it's like, oh, you can lift things. So can so Sweetie can Belle. <laughs> yep. So can Sweetie <laughs> Belle. I, I, in some ways, I do feel bad for Sunset. I, I, I too think it's really great to have a power that lets you connect with others that, that really reinforces the friendship. But I can't help but think that in this grand cavalcade of, of powers, she's heart. <laughs> no. Yeah, kind of. Right. <laughs> if, if you really, I still compare her as the uh, Deus Ex Machina of the movie, though, I because know. of her power. But I'm just waiting for Sunset to get, to just scream. I wanted to talk to you about carbon emissions. <laughs> 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 but Silver, if you really think about it, isn't Matisse's whole stick about communicating with people and the animals? So isn't uh, Fluttershy's thing closer to heart? If she could say, attack my animals, Fluttershy, uh, Sunset could just say, I know how you're feeling. <laughs> tell you what, I'll, I'll tell you what I feel. I feel like I'm about to be mauled by a bear <laughs> being controlled by Fluttershy. How do you think I feel? <laughs> Save me, heart. <laughs> That's morbid. <laughs> hey, well, we just had, we just saw, uh, in, in 28 pranks later that Fluttershy has a bear bouncer. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> you tell him, Harry. <laughs> uh, you keep your hands on my flesh, shall you hear? So, <laughs> uh, but I, I will say, I'm a sucker for super speed. If I could be and go places that fast, imagine how much more I could get done in a day. Oh, true that. But you have to remember that your rendering is going to take a while. <laughs> uh, well, I go do something else while it's while it's rendering. He could I'm... always head off to Starbucks and just make a coffee himself and just leave. Oh, yeah, gosh. yeah, really stick it to the man. <laughs> you imagine but, a super speed, a person with super speed that just drank like ten cups of coffee? They'd probably go twice as fast. <laughs> I, 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 it'd be Fry from Futurama. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, when he drank like uh, the hundred cups of coffee. Oh yes. Actually, the, it may be the greatest superpower would be you physically do not need to sleep. That would be the great superpower in my eyes. Imagine I would love that so much because sleep is like the biggest obstacle obstacle when you have to get things done. Oh yeah. Anywho, well, with now this is a good opportunity to talk about Sunset because this is her. In my eyes, this is her role in the story. Having gotten over her own magical failing, risen to join the team and re-embraced magic, then frustrated by how it doesn't follow the rules that she's used to. Now, throughout this movie, she is the group's uh, guide and encourager to embracing magic through, uh, once again, a single song. It's kind of like Spike in uh, The Times They Are Changeling. But at least she's encouraging them to stop stop trying to deny it and instead embrace it. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. So what, what did you guys think of Sunset in this movie? Best Pony Waifu, 10 out of 10, would watch again. Uh, Sefi, what do you think of the, the shimmery? Deus Ex Machina, that's all I can really say, but it is an interesting concept because of, uh, how Sunset Shimmer, uh, plays in this world of, you know, the, it, well, honestly, I wouldn't be able to think of any other power to suit Sunset Shimmer other than, well, that. Mm-hmm. A fire. I honestly don't oh, have yeah. much to say. She's become the voice of the 
voice of reason in this uh, story. I didn't know he was one. If that makes any sense. Yeah, when did Voice of Reason get in on this? I I, I feel so much cheated. He's just going to talk about how much he hates Luna for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> the Luna rant. Well, either way, he feels like a voice of... She feels like a voice of reason in the story, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I know, but we, we, can't, we can't avoid... To, we can't uh, resist taking advantage of his name you play. Can... Voice, voice <laughs> scares me, so... Yeah. Oh, well... And Finny Finn, Sunset Shimmer. What did I think about Shimmy Sham Wow? <laughs> well, I thought that, well, as with every movie, she pretty much steals the show. Mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, how do I put this? Well, first first of all, obviously, she's incredibly adorable, like the stuff you mentioned before, but the flashlight and the, uh, you know, uh, what's it called, with the uh, getting up out of bed and all that stuff. And I loved, her song was probably my favorite in the movie. Where she's finally, you know, telling them to actually embrace the magic instead of trying to conceal it inside. And she's kind of like, I don't, I don't know how to put this. I'm, I'm, I got the words, I just don't know how to let them out. She's the best waifu? <laughs> That's part of it, yes. She's the best waifu. I guess the best, I guess the best way I can describe, I guess the best way I can describe Sunset is just a little bit of everything. I mean, she's got a little bit of comedy, she's got a little bit of character development, and she's got a little bit of something that, you know, the others don't have. I mean, with the others, you know, if they were, if Twilight went to them for advice, they'd probably be like, oh no, uh, you know, oh no, it's okay, everything's alright. But she's, she's really straightforward to the point with everybody. You know, it's like, okay, this is happening, here's what you gotta do, here's what you gotta fix. So, as a whole, I really did enjoy her, and I thought she was easily the best part of the movie for me. Yeah, in all honesty, I have to say Sunset improved her character throughout the whole series. Like, she's more, well, she I won't say relatable, but you want to be with her. You want to know more about her. She's really, really awesome here. And I just don't know what to say. Her character, her attitude, just overall in general... Uh, Rebecca Shrokett did a really good job in voicing her. So, top notch, A+. I can see why she would seem like Deus Ex because she can suddenly burst into people's minds and uh, anchor them. You know, she's sort of the, the fix-all. But she is also the heart, pun intended, <laughs> of, of, the, of this show. This series, it is, even though the, there's a heavy emphasis on Twilight, this, uh, this movie... Sunset is the heart of this. She's the unique factor you don't find in the Friendship is Magic show. Yeah. She, uh, she's the thing that a lot of people come back to when it comes to the movies. And even before they start getting superpowers, you know, Rainbow is is shouting out all the things she wants to do at camp, and Sunset politely but firmly takes her side and let someone else talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again, like I said, she's very to the point. She doesn't beat around the bush. It's like, okay, this is going on. You should do this to fix it. But she's not rude either. That's the that's the yeah. great balance. She's she's not like uh oh what was it sugarcoat? Yeah, yeah sugarcoat, she sugarcoat who was a uh, very blunt <laughs> yeah. and straightforward, but in uncaring. A way. Yeah, uncaring. Bluntness is uncaring. Yeah, she just provides tough love basically. At the same time too, I think with Sunset here, it's her experience in life with what happened to her, what she did. So she knows how to talk to people now and at the same time too she was the bully she learned her lesson and now using that she can learn from it and try to apply it in a positive way and with that i think we should move forward because we we're really about at the climax here Mm. because you know stuff happens we we learn the truth about glorious and the geodes wait does that ruin safi's geodes aren't the same as gems are they actually they are huh Geodes okay. are basically um, gems found within rocks, is, like if oh. that makes any sense. All right, head cannon preserved. Huzzah! Actually, but a geode is a small cavity in rock with crystals in it. Who cares? It still has crystals in it. Well, then they well then they kind of mix that up because they're they're calling the gems themselves geodes. A rum. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, well, rocks themselves are a combination of minerals, which are also crystals and gems, into one. Sentient rock. And meanwhile, Geo dudes on the sides going, "This is false. This is false. <laughs> this is false. This is wrong. This is wrong." <laughs> but uh, I gotta say, when Gloriosa transformed, I was intensely disappointed. Really? I mean, 
Oh, is that flashback where Timber is is talking about Gaia Everfree? Mm. I was groaning the, as well, like over that. I mean, that thing looked cool. It was this. It was this yeah. nightmare combination of the forest with just a human face. I could see that being in Equestria, just with a different, you know, face. Mm. And and then we get Poison Ivy's fashion blind sister. <laughs> but in all honesty, <laughs> um, with Gaia Everfree, it's just the campers' imagination playing on them because we got no idea how she really looks because this is just a description by Timber here. I I don't even think it was a description. It was just a... Either way, it's not Gaia Everfree Norman. It's just not as cool. She's just wearing gloves and you get the sense that she's just a superhero cosplay. Not She's not embracing the magic. I mean, Twilight and Sunset... And the sirens all developed these demonic wings. That's true. She just kind of floats around. She kind of floats around. She then, floats around and controls trees. Whoa. Hey, controlling Which trees. Vines grow. That power is still dangerous, yo. Yeah, leave that alone. Yeah. Yeah. We're all rooting for the trees. Oh, yeah. So what do we call her? Gaia Gloriosa? I don't know. What did Gloriosa Gaia? What did the show you call her even? No, nothing? I'm not sure. She didn't have a name, I don't think. Hmm. Uh, probably it would be one of those things where the fans would figure something out or the show writers would say something because uh, Midnight Sparkle, I never knew that was the name until later on. So the battle against Gloriosa Gaia is enjoyable in my eyes. I mean, it's not quite on par with some of the magical the magical light shows we've enjoyed in the past. I truly think that the battle against the Sirens was the high point or Equestria Girls and, and Conflicts. I have to point something out. When we watched the Brazilian release of this leak, um, most of the fight scenes got cut out. Mm. It's true, but but everyone was going at it just one power at a time. Yeah, yeah. but I didn't really see like, the whole thing. All I knew was suddenly Rarity Shield. What? Some some things. It was like Applejack throws a rock, she fixes it. Pinkie Pie throws some exploding sprinkles, they fix it. Yeah, so but, it's like one power at a time constantly getting thwarted. But in between there, like before the whole... Like I, I do know that Sunset came in, did something. And here's where I need to rewatch it to fully appreciate that fight scene. But I can't imagine that the sirens were much better than this. Yeah. Well, yes. the, sir- uh, the sirens I might as well were a lot better. Um... I will say I can now compare Applejack to Batman the Animated Series. Mm. I threw a rock at it. <laughs> it was a big rock. <laughs> Seems and, legit. And yet Twilight's telekinesis, which again I find kind of funny because she is that is the most basic power in Equestria, though though obviously on a more powerful scale. Yeah. Uh, Almost every unicorn can do it. It, almost every unicorn could do it or learns to do it, and but that is the power that defeats Gloriosa. And so, with uh, is there anything anyone wants to add about the uh, the battle? Uh, honestly, I'm good. I, yeah, I mean, honestly, I didn't watch the whole battle scene go through, so it would be an unfair opinion on set battle scene. When I We're saw for- though, I thought it was decent. Yeah, We're decent reviewers. Fight. We're reviewers. What do we care about fair opinions? Hey, yeah. I have Arump. dignity with my opinions. Well, no, that's... you don't. You never did. Ooh, oh, <laughs> Seffy going for the... Going for Seffy, the jugular. Savage, Seffy. Savage heart song. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. Uh, Hasn't that always been true, though? Yes. Uh, and that's part of the reason I love you. Uh, would it... We're not together anymore, but okay. Wow. I can but... love you as a friend. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Ooh. So, uh, Flash Finn and, uh, Sunset Safi, uh, can continue their conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but, with, with, um, with Gloriosa now knocked back to reality, we get kind of a hasty resolution, but we also get a fashion blitzkrieg. Oh, yeah. Because, because now the pony, the human pony hybrids, they show up, but then they transform into these costumes. And all I could think of is that earlier Rarity and Pinky wanted capes, and all I could think of was the Incredibles. Yeah. No capes! <laughs> no capes! And no some, capes! And some cosmic force heard me because they had no capes, but you look like, you look like the Beatles. 
the Sergeant Pepper cover in my eyes. That's all, like a thing. All you need are gems. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, that what you? I don't know if there's anything you guys want to add to the costumes. Did you like them? No, I don't mind it. <sighs> Like, like, I didn't think they were necessary, really. I mean, they already had the powers without needing really the costumes, but uh, yeah, they, they were all right, I guess. No, Finn, 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 no, you, have to, you have to remember that they're going to sell merchandising, merchandising, where the real money from the movie is made. But honest- Still, though, it's a total eyesore. Just no. But that, that's kind of the that's kind of the better than the rainbow forms, in my opinion. Yeah. You, you, one realizes though, because you say, yeah, they're doing this just because they want to sell toys, but then in some ways that makes it worse. It's like, you're just doing this to sell a toy. It, it breaks my interest in the movie. And mm-hmm. honest, and honestly, I think you sell more when people are invested in the movie. Cause it's kind of unnecessary. I mean, the gems could have easily just made them, you know, ponify themselves, you know, get, you know, the wings and the tails and everything. They didn't really have to put them in completely different attire. Mm-hmm. But in all honesty, <laughs> it's a rather humblest thing to add in. I mean, it's the kind of thing where you can take it or leave it kind of situation where you could just take it or leave it because the costume design thingy is not going to add anything more. Probably artists will just latch on to it and draw more awesome designs or something like that. Or, you know what? Insane people on the internet could have just um, changed it into Kamen Rider costumes or even better cosplayers dressing as them. Yay. Win-win all around. I would like to see Common Rider Equestria. <laughs> yes. So we come to the end, which is basically, one, having just gotten the superhero costumes, we suddenly go to party night dresses as we have the charity to save the uh, the camp. And we started this off with them raising money to go to camp. Now they're raising money to save the camp. It, Here's the question, I, though. Have they fixed the dang school yet? We don't even I... see the school in this movie. Have they fixed the damage to the school yet? Yes. What well, we what damage was we see the school? The horse, the horse statue got blown up. We did see that at the very, very end. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, with the little teaser. The little teaser, but it, it honestly, I have no faith in in Celestia or Luna to have the budgetary requirements to fix a school. They're probably making Sunset mortar it up again. <laughs> oh poor Sunset. Now, we did skip over something that was really not vital story, but Rarity goes on and on, and it's this running joke about the dock slash runway <laughs> getting destroyed yep. and rebuilt and destroyed and rebuilt. And it's just like, well, that's a thing that happens. I guess their pain is funny. Yep. But Rarity, good Lord, way to hammer this into the ground. We get it. You want to do a fashion show. Enough already. Well, she's a teenager in high school. She never had a real proper fashion show before, unlike her equestrian counterpart. So I would give her her pass. Like, it's one of her things that she wants to have, like a dream come true kind of thing. But uh that's about the movie. It kind of ends just... Well, it ends on that question, What? where did the magic come from that hit this place? And, of course, they show Canchalot High. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gloriosa, Gloriosa offers a quick apology. Oh, I should have asked for help. But that is the long and the short of it. Yeah, also, you forgot yeah. to mention that almost kissing with Timber and Sai Twai. <laughs> oh. okay, you're, you're getting a little too excited by this one, Norman. Go take a cold shower. No, I'm excited <laughs> because of the implication. That there are mortal teenagers who might actually share a kiss? Yes! What, what is this full... And the fender will rage! What is this full house? <laughs> Ooh! They kissed each other! Ooh. The whole audience goes, Ooh! <laughs> Ooh, Kaiba boy! <laughs> no, come on. Wouldn't what, what you like to see that rage on the internet because two characters kissing? <laughs> Wow, you're trying to be a mini joker. I I gotta say that as much as I joke about watching fandom drama, I actually find it quite training. Oh yeah, true that. <laughs> no. I 100% agree. There's certain dramas that I'm okay with, and this one, with how ridiculous it is, I will take it because two fictional characters kissing will make people mad. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, that'll be great. <laughs> it should be fun. Just wait until we get the Friendship is Magic sequel where we see Twilight and Flash's kid. <laughs> 
Oh god, let's see, let's see, let's wait. <laughs> oh, it's not that might be. Equestria weird. Girls, Equestria Girls Five. I didn't know I was pregnant. <laughs> oh wow. What? Equestria Girls Five Protection is magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So is there anything else that we're missing out? Well, uh, one thing we're definitely missing out is human dignity. <laughs> yeah. But basically, Equestria Girls, it just sort of ends. That's the funny thing. They have, they, they get the gems away and it ends and that's about the long and the short of it. Mm-hmm. It's just so over. It's just over. It's done, but it's also teasing the next one, which in a way makes me feel like the last two movies have been more, tr- more about transition than an overarching story. I guess giving you the feel of the world, kind of. At this point, I feel like we, we, we know the world. I'm not really as invested in the world. Mm. We, we, if we had more transforming cars and absurdist, <laughs> yeah. uh, material, but the only thing that's really absurd in this movie is that Bulk thinks he can make those pink pants look good. <laughs> hey, 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 the man got gumption. He thinks it looks good. It looks good on him. Yeah, he can rock a pink suit. Yeah. Uh, but in all honesty, with how the teaser at the end there is showing that, ooh, the magic is coming out of that crack there, ooh. I still say this movie is on equal level as, uh, friendship games. Well, the ending is, uh, different as of how it was, uh, executed, in my opinion. Like, it wasn't as suspenseful. Wasn't as memorable. I can barely remember what happened in this movie other than something about a dance scene. What, really? Oh, and a, and, and a tear. It was meh. Or a peer. <laughs> Although I do hope that someday, and I doubt they will, expand him on the crystal magic because my head cannon. <laughs> I am best gem <clears throat> Pegasus Pony who was in a crystal pony. <laughs> sure you are. Sounds I'd like to think that. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like a sounds like we're kind of humor. It's like sure you are. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Sure you are. I will achieve levitation without the need of a horn one day. Sure you will. It's called use your dang appendages, <laughs> you lazy bum. <laughs> yep. No thanks. <laughs> Give your wings a workout. Oh, there you go. Hey, yeah, that's right. You do have appendages that could pick things up. Yep. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, Norman, what do you think of this movie overall? Well, this movie overall, it's, it feels like it's setting up for stuff. Like, they're putting the pieces together to set up for something much bigger. Like, the first two movies were just the introductions. The third and fourth one was just something to set up about powers and whatnot. Like, the number three was getting Twy into the series. Number four, Four is just getting their powers together. And I feel that number five is going to be something huge and something big. Like, it's going to be really, really awesome. Maybe I'm overhyping myself. But there's a lot of potential coming out with the fifth one, if the fifth one does come out. So, I don't know. Hopefully the fifth one will be the end. We don't need another Land Before Time sequel hey, this, thing. This was good. There's no harm in getting a sixth one out if it's needed. Yeah. Yes, it is. Well, I... But okay. Who knows how long this will go. We've, we've wondered how long the pony ride can last. Yeah. <laughs> well, but let's not... Let's not give up on anything. Yep, yep. And overall, uh, I like this movie. You hear me being all giddy about certain things and say how Sunset is by Swaifu and whatnot. And in all honesty, yeah, my opinion still stands. I would say that this is the best in terms of uh where I rank this in all of the QGs. I would just say that this is a strong third. And in terms of song, uh, six songs on the album, Almost what six bucks that I paid for it. Uh, Why would you pay six bucks when you could get it on YouTube for free? Because I want to support the official release. Screw the official release. Oh, you no, know a bridge fan would say that. <laughs> uh, but you know, honestly, uh, I like it. Thumbs up. Yay. Hey, there you Yay. go. Yay. Hey. And Finn's a pony. Yes. <laughs> will you join in the yays? Yes, I will. Yay. I like this one a lot. 
It might be actually my second favorite of the movies. Rainbow Rock still holds gold, but this one's probably a solid second. I love the atmosphere. I love the characterization, especially on Sunset. There were a couple of hiccups here and there and a couple of annoyances, rarity. <laughs> but overall, it was a, it was a very enjoyable movie. Like I said, a few thing, a few things could have been better. Like, you know, the villain transformation was like kind of, eh, you know, certain things like that. But, you know, the characters pulled it together and I love the idea of them going to camp. It was just an overall really great and fun movie. So I definitely watch it again. Yay. <laughs> and I'd like to see it again for the things I missed. I, I enjoyed it overall. It's fun. It's lighthearted. It's, it's not something you really dwell on and it didn't offend. Any character presentation. I will say, uh, Stalker Spruce might be just a little bit too fixated on Twilight. Mm. But, uh, he was a much more charming character and that could have gone so much worse. Oh, who's that? <laughs> uh, Timber Spruce or, uh, or Timberlane. Timber. Yeah. Just, Timber. Mm. Timber Lake? Uh, I just call I just call him Stalker Lane. <laughs> Stalker Lane. <laughs> uh, but honestly, Timber was just fantastic. Ten out of ten. Wow, you, You're not doing the ten out of ten. Can I right. just say? I just like to say that he is he's a glorious hunk of meat, and I'm feeling just a little topsy turvy for him myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. I just can't take my eyes off of that guy. <laughs> yep. There's something about that chin, <laughs> that horribly freakish, sentient pimple-sized chin. He makes me want to faint so hard that people will be yelling timber when I fall over. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, would you say that he's the crimson chin? <laughs> if yeah, I... he's more of an emerald. Aye. Oh. We're going into the Pokemans. <laughs> but, <laughs> the Pokemon. No, there's no Pokemon crimson, although that would be cool. <sighs> Give it a week. <laughs> if they can market it, they will. Yeah. Anyway, so so that is uh, The Legend of Everfree, a fun movie that I think we all enjoy for various reasons. And But we're hoping that things are a little more focused in the next Equestria Girls. So, you know, maybe a little... Once return to the this clear and intended villain mm. plot. That'd be my hope. So... Uh, Norman, we must talk about the next review. Yes, the next review. That's going to be an interesting one. And I think we're going back to episode reviews again, right? I guess. Yes. And next week's episode review is going to be Season 6, Episode 16, Times They Are Changeling, written by Kevin Burke and Chris Dockwaddy. Hmm, they're new writers. That's interesting. Brand new oh. writers. Adding a, adding a new take on the classic, uh, changeling. Yep. Mm-hmm. So we're not gonna talk about that one till next week, but hey, this is one of those episodes that are pretty interesting and people are excited for. Yay! Yes, indeed. All right. Yay! <laughs> and so we will all look forward to seeing you again for the, for that podcast and to hear your thoughts on the episode. Mm-hmm. Also, Finn, thank you for joining us for this look back at Legend of Everfree. You are very welcome. Anytime you need me, I am here. Excellent. Yay! Yay! Why do I expect? Thank you, come again. Oh well. Well, now we're now that's just getting racist. <laughs> uh, I'm Asian. Shame on you, Norman. I'm Asian. I can do it. Ah, oh, that he's Indian. Ha ha. <laughs> Far from it. <laughs> uh, Apu is maybe Indian. I listen. I'll type. I want to. <laughs> Sin. I expect that kind of behavior from Norman, but not you. You said it in the episode. And I was just doing a quote. <laughs> to the uh, to the corner. Oh, okay, always the, I'm showing. Always the corner. Always the corner. But anyway, guys, we wish you all well. Happy Halloween month. Mm-hmm. And we will see you soon for the NBS show. I am Cecilia Quill. I am Norman Sanzo. I am Sapphire Hartson. And I am Finn Ziponi. And we're saying adios. See ya. Bye-bye. See ya. Oh, those mosquitoes. Oh, oh you please, under- you don't know the half of it. Are you under attack? There are mosquitoes all over me. Ah! I feel like you're doing the strong set, strong mad <laughs>